Beagle 2 was a really innovative project. It was trying to look for evidence of life on Mars and actually, in fact, evidence of organics. It was trying to do world-class science. It was way ahead of its time. The size of Beagle 2 in order to fit on Mars Express had to be very, very small. It had to be no more than about a metre across in terms of its heat shield, no more than 60 to 70 kilos in terms of its mass in order to fly. So the design of Beagle 2 was a very innovative design. It was a pocket watch type opening design in terms of the lander. It, the mass was about 68 to 70 kilos. It used parachutes and airbags to cushion its landing on Mars and then would have unfolded, exposing its solar panels in order to operate on the surface. Beagle 2 was launched on Mars Express on the 2nd of June 2003. It was fully operational and then was ejected from Mars Express on the 19th of December 2003 to enter the atmosphere at about 2.51 on the 25th of December 2003. And it would have been a great Christmas present if it communicated with us. Unfortunately, it didn't. We never heard from Beagle 2 following its ejection from Mars Express and we thought it was lost. Late last year, a private citizen, Michael Kroon of Germany, who is actually an ex-Mars Express operations person, actually discovered some targets on Mars, which could be Beagle 2. We've gone back to those images, examined them, and actually commissioned, in conjunction with the high-rise team in NASA, some additional images. And those images show very good evidence of Beagle 2 having landed successfully on Mars. And what we see is a parachute, what we see is a partially deployed lander, what we see is a rear cover and a pilot chute and possibly even an airbag which was used to actually cushion the landing of Beagle 2. Why do we think it's Beagle 2? Because we have a number of images now, we have three taken over a number of years and in between those images the sun angle changes and you get different glints off that target as that sun angle changes. Those glints show that you've got a flat metallic surface and it's exactly the right size. The interesting thing is it's only partially deployed and that would explain a lot because Beagle 2 had to fully open all its solar panels in order for the radio antenna to be visible and to be able to transmit data to Mars orbiting satellites, both Mars Express and the NASA orbiting satellite, to communicate with us and tell us when it's landed and for us to be able to operate it from here in Leicester. So that would explain the mystery of why Beagle 2 was lost. Exactly what the reason is, we don't know, and we will do further imaging and further analysis to try and ascertain exactly what happened to Beagle 2. Beagle 2 wasn't a failure by any stretch of the imagination. It trained a whole generation of engineers and scientists in Mars exploration and has led indirectly to UK large involvement in the ESA's Aurora Planetary Exploration Program and also the ExoMars mission, which is a rover that will go to Mars in 2018 and will be drilling for potential evidence of organics in life in 2019. The exciting thing is we found Beagle 2. It's been lost for 11 to 12 years, depending whether you count from launch or, or landing. It was a great project. Colin enthused everybody. I just find it sad that Colin passed away last May, and unfortunately we'll never know how close Beagle 2 got to doing the world-class science that he and the rest of the team proposed. And it was a privilege for the University of Leicester to be involved in the project. <laughs>